Hello, my name is KJ, and I am the host of Great Talk and Entertainment, and this is the podcast where we talk about movies, TV shows, superheroes, and comic books, and also, we have some other entertainings that you can only see here on our YouTube channel, Great Talk and Entertainment, so please subscribe, hit that like button, hit that notification button too as well, so you can always be up to date with all of our latest posts on Great Talk. And entertainment. So let's get into this. So today we're talking about episode two of the new Disney Plus series, Marvel's What If. And on episode two, it was about Chichala, aka Black Panther. And this is the version of what if Yondu picked up Chichala as a child instead of Peter Quill, aka Star Lord. And before we get into this, this is a spoiler review, so if you have not seen this show yet, get just leave a like here, pause this video, go watch that show, and then come back and check out this awesome, great, entertaining review, baby. Let's go. All right. So, like I said, this is Chichala in the Garden of the Galaxy type story instead of Star Lord in obviously in the Garden of the Galaxy. So, a quick summary of this. This is basically, like I said, it's Peter Quill's story, but as Black Panther, or as now we just call him T'Challa in this series, um, he got abducted and he wanted to. And and that's a big difference. Um, in Garden of the Galaxy Volume 1, if you haven't seen it, spoilers, um, in that one, we learned that Peter Quill wanted to stay with his mother, who who obviously died of cancer, and he didn't want to leave Earth. This one, T'Challa as a child, he didn't want to stay in Wakanda, not because of nothing super bad, but... You know, he still had that same thing of like, I don't want to be a king. I just want to leave Wakanda and explore the world. Now, the key word is the world. And obviously, T'Challa's father, one the, like the original, one of the original Black Panther. Let's just say it like that. Because you never know what Marvel's going to do with, with these uh, other versions of Black Panther. So... Now, this place takes in 1988, so, okay, so this was in the 80s, so if you really want to get a picture of how this is going, because if you remember, uh, I think it was in the 80s as well, Star-Lord, aka Pretty Quill, that's when he was abducted by Yondu in the Garden Galaxy Volume 1. Now, the way Ego met Peter Quill's mom was in the... 70s or maybe 60-ish. I want to say 70s. So, it, there, there's not a difference in the time, in the years of that same situation or event as the uh, Watcher explains it. But that's that's okay. But it, uh, I think it's really cool that uh, what what Wakanda looked like in the 80s. I think that's pretty unique about this episode. But instead, like I said, instead of Chichala wanting to leave, so he got on the ship. And, you know, Yondu's like, well, you want to travel the world. you Or not travel the world. Well, I guess, yeah. But he kind of, the way he said it was, Yondu said it like this, actually. He said, if you want to, you want to explore the world. But how about I'd let you explore the galaxy? Something like that. I'm not saying that's the official quote, but don't quote me on that. But he pretty much said, yeah, that's cool and all type thing, but this is cooler, which he was exploring the galaxy. So that's more than just exploring the world, obviously. You know, little Chichal was just talking about he wanted to see maybe like Paris or the United States or... Italy, you know, if Yandu just gave him a whole new world, a whole new view, like flip the script on that guy or kid at the time. And what I will say is, 
I like about the character Chichala, aka Black Panther, is he still has the same personality, the same attitude you would have saw him in, obviously, Captain America Civil War and the live action uh, Black Panther. And obviously, in like Endgame and uh, Infinity War, too, but it's still the same personality, the same character. And obviously was voiced as by Chad Boswick, which is really awesome. So that's cool. He in this one, like I said, he still had the same personality, and but he still had that. Um, he was kind of laid back and goofy, kind of like Peter Gr- uh, Peter Quill, Star Lord. But he was more serious. Um, he wasn't really. Uh, an immature. I would say, Chichal was more mature in this version of the Guardian of the Galaxy, instead of Peter Quill, who was unmature. He was immature. I would say that's the word, immature, because Peter Quill he didn't have a care in the world. Chichala does. Like he has a reason, and. Obviously, in this one, <laughs> which I'm noticing these these uh, episodes, past two episodes, one and two, obviously, they have like a Disney reference. Um, I forgot. I totally forgot what it was in uh, episode one, but they had a Disney reference. But so did this one, and this one was the Robin Hood, steal from the rich, give to the poor, and. I think that's the that just tells you the biggest difference between these those two episodes if you want to go deep in that. I would say another thing that's a big difference is that is T'Challa was even uh even even smartening up and softened Yandu's heart in a way. So I think that's pretty cool. Uh the next topic is Thanos slash the good guy. Is that crazy or what? So in this version, Thanos is a good guy who had a change of heart from actually snapping the world, getting all the the stones and changing the and, uh, you know, snapping the world like he did in the Avengers Endgame. But in this one, when T'Challa was a child, he convinced Thanos there was a better way to do what he did. So, yeah. He was the Mad Titan in this world, but he's changed. So, he's actually literally just mad. He's crazy. Thanos is crazy. Like, he's a lunatic. And now he's the good guy. And what's crazy, T'Challa and Thanos and Yondu are on the same team slash crew. Like, they work together. Like, they do bargains and deals and do the the business and I think that's so crazy and awesome like you can't get any more of that it is it kind of creepy to me yeah because Thanos in this episode still talked about you know I think it wouldn't worked if if you guys had just to let me snap my fingers with the with the stones and and cha- and snapped away half the population. Like, oh my gosh, dude. Like, no, don't do it. You know, he he's still mad, but he's the good Thanos now. And I think it's really awesome that Josh Brolin played, uh, re-plays that role. I think that is so awesome. Like, I can dig that. Um, let's see. Another thing I really like is this one didn't have, like, group. They didn't have Drax. Well, they had Drax, but Drax was a bartender. Because, obviously, Channels had a th- change of heart. So, that means when Chichal was a child, that Drax, his family wasn't murdered by Thanos. So, that that tells you a lot about Chichal's personality. And what I mean by that is... That's how T'Challa was in the Black Panther movie when it came to uh, sharing the Wakanda's uh, technology and 
And if you remember, a lot of people were like, no, nah, I don't want to share it. We don't want to share our knowledge with America or anybody outside of literally Wakanda. They don't even share that in Africa. So Chichala still had that same desire. And that's still really cool. So even in a, in a multiverse alternate version, he's still the same personality. It's just he's just living the a different life at this moment. Uh, let's see. Like, like, like another example is he still had the uh, the necklace that he wore in Black Panther, and yeah, the one he the updated one was obviously when he hit touched him, his suit would come on, but this one wasn't. And and I could have been wrong. It probably could, but uh, the main villain in this one was the Collector, and he ran the the Dark Order, which is uh, obviously Thanos is. Um, crew so obviously there's there's two huge difference of the collector that's different from the collector in the live action from obviously the Guardian galaxy movies and the thor movies and obviously avengers endgame and uh in avengers infinity war 2 well he wasn't in avengers endgame he was actually just in avengers infinity war is in that one, he was kind of like a, he was a slime ball, but he was a coward. Like he wasn't a fighter. He just he was just the guy that collected the things, and you know, you know, he was like the bank, the the hideout for all the bad guys in a way, or the villains. But this one, this guy, he's the boss. He's the head honcho. He's he's freaking ripped. He's in good shape. He's strong. He has all the powerful weapons and. Heck, he even had the Captain American shield, which we'll get back to that part on my theory list. Um, another thing, he was the uh, he was the the mobster. He was the Godfather of the Guardian Galaxy in this. Like everybody feared him because that you know in this one Thanos is no longer the the bad guy. He's the good guy. So this is the the game changer of it. So that's pretty cool. Um, and what I liked about him is in this one, the collector, when he collected things, he actually uses them. And in this one, they show him in, in a deeper detail of what he actually does as the collector. Like in the live action, they never really talked about what he does with his collections. But in comic books, yeah, he does dissect some of the. Uh, human slash living creatures that he imprisons or collects so yeah he's still yeah in the live action he yeah he is that dude but in this one he's more of a stronger powerful collector but that's only because Thanos is not around or the bad guy I should say so there's that um let's go to his daughter um Nebula has blonde hair. Um, I really love this version of Nebula. Like her with blonde hair, I would love to see that in a live action where she is with blonde hair and she's in a relationship. You know, I would kind of like to see her in a relationship with a uh, War Machine, just because, just because, you know, in the live action scene, Nebula has yet didn't really meet. T'Challa yet or Black Panther but uh, I don't know maybe I don't know if they'll give her a love story relationship in the live action but if she did I think War Machine but I just think that because that's the they kind of had a moment in Endgame when they were going back in time to collect the stones and all that but that's that's for a different that's for its own separate episode of Nebula theory breaking down that I might do, so I'll save that for later, but other than that, I really like the flirtation between her and Chichala in this universe, um, Nebula is more of a, like a secret agent, kind of like Black Widow in a way, and I really dig the outfit, so, well, I hope, I hope I see more of her in a live action, so, that'd be really cool, so let's get into my theories. Um, now, in the ending of this episode, you see Ego, 
visit his son Star Lord, which I think it's really cool they put Dairy Queen in the uh, in a Marvel episode in a Marvel series again. Uh, so I wonder if there's gonna maybe they have a deal. I don't know. That'd be cool. But anyway, um, Peter Quill is working at Dairy Queen, and he looks like a a, a hippie, a laid back dude, a, a bum. Like, oh, what up? And he yes, he still listens to the cool music that he likes to listen to in the Garden Galaxy. But in this one. Ego comes down and says it's time to come home. So, one of my theory is I think Star Lord is going to become the villain in this ver- in this multiverse in this version of uh, what if I think I think he's going to have a different outtake. Like, did his mom die in this one, or is she alive? Um, I don't know, but I think in theory that he's going to be the villain and him and Ego are going to be like, you know, they could be the main villain like throughout the whole series where they have their their version of an an Avengers team up and they kind of hint that uh, some type of Avengers team up in the what if trailers. I forget which one, but I think it was the last trailer they dropped. I think he could be like the big final boss after the la- on the last episode of Marvel's What If. Um, they showed Captain America's shield. I have a theory that uh, with uh, Captain Britain or Captain uh, Carter, I think in Captain Carter's universe, I think that somewhere down the line Captain America there was a Captain America in the uh, I think I'm thinking like in the Falcon and Winter Soldier I think John Walker in this universe becomes Captain America but not the way uh, he was in Falcon and the Winter Soldier I think John Walker would be the same has the same story as steve rogers but in a different year maybe in the 2000s or 90s or something so i think in this universe john walker lives up to be steve rogers but has the same captain america story so i'm saying basically is john walker is the good guy in this universe but i think he had to make the ultimate sacrifice that Captain America's shield belongs to John Walker, a.k.a. Captain America. So I think we'll have a good guy John Walker in the Marvel What If series. I also think another theory is I think the Watcher will interfere at some point. And I think that's where that will happen in the Doctor Strange episode. So, I'd be excited to see that. Um, But that's all my theories. Um, Just tell me guys what you think about those in the comments on YouTube. Um, 1 out of 10. I'm going to give this one a 10. And here's why. This is what I was saying on episode one. They didn't have... They they played it really safe in episode one. They didn't do a lot of changes, but they had a lot of changes, obviously. And, and the reason why it had a lot of changes was just because of Captain Carter herself was the big change. But this one in episode two was a huge change. They changed everything. I mean... To make it where Thanos is a good guy, that's a huge change. To have Nebula and Thanos um, make up and have a better father-daughter relationship tells me that uh, I can imagine Gamora being different. So... Another theory, I was I, I was going to save it later, but I'm just going to say it now. I think Gamora is 
Thanos, like evil Thanos. But she's the one who wants to collect all the stones and snap the world. Just like Thanos did in the Avengers Infinity War. That's what I think. I think Gamora is going to be very evil in this one. Like Thanos. So I'm okay with that. I hope they show us a Gamora in this. And I think they will because I know in the poster sh sh they show her. But now I'm thinking, okay. Now, it could. my theory could be right. But my theory about Gamora could be wrong. She could be like... More like an anti-hero in a way. Like Robin or, or Batman in a way. But I'm, I'm thinking more... They could do the vengeance... The, the vigilante th way with uh, Gamora too. That's also a possibility. Just because they showed her in the poster with uh, Thanos' um, I forgot the name of the weapon that Thanos used in the uh, Avengers Endgame, but she hasn't. But, you know, that that could just make her a vigilante of the, the, the galaxy or something. But she also could be one of the big villains and she could be doing the Thanos way, the evil Thanos way. So that's another thing I think. So that's why I give it a ten because if Thanos is the good guy, so who who's taking Thanos' story then? It's not Nebula. That's why I thought that. And another thing I really like is they also made it where. T'Challa could be still be the Black Panther since he came back home in this episode. So that's another thing I really liked about this. They did not play it safe with this. And that's the main key point of what I was I'm trying to explain is they did not play it safe. They they went they threw everything but the kitchen sink at this point, really like and that's what I really like about that. They they're taking risk. They're, they're willing to uh, push the envelope a little bit different. They're willing to risk it and upset some fans, some Marvel fans or just superhero fans and obviously the critics. So they challenged it. They, they're going with it and they're not looking back. And I, I am okay with that. That's what we need now in this uh, Marvel Cinematic Universe. A little bit more not safe plays. A little bit different to make it a little bit weird you know that's what we kind of need so I really like this episode a lot guys and I cannot wait for episode 3 baby so yeah I'm going with I'm giving a 10 so that's really it um, tell me guys what you think about this show on uh, episode 2 leave leave your comments and thoughts in the uh, comment section on the YouTube channel and thank you guys for checking me out Please subscribe to Great Talk and Entertainment. Hit that notification button so you can always be updated when I upload some more.